Today is Friday, the 17th of November. Tomorrow, Leads and Superiors goes up for pre-order. Lots of content creators have those rules and minis in their hands right now, but the embargo ends at the same time the pre-orders go up. For now, you've just got me. Today, I'm planning out my own purchases, and maybe that'll be some help in that FOMO window before we get to watch everyone else's videos to get the full details. Earlier in the week, I posted a video looking at the cost of Legion Imperialis. We took the armies from the White Dwarf and tried to work out what it would look like in real money. People quite rightly called me out in the comments over a few things. I tend to focus on skirmish games, so the cost of a full 30, or full 3k Legion's army came as a bit of a shock to me. But for players of 40k and Age Sigmar, those numbers were a little bit more familiar. Viewers also pointed out that the White Dwarf armies were probably the wrong ones to approach, at least initially. We should be starting with ones that use the starter box as the core, and then a few boxes to build on that to get up to that 3k. I do stand by the core message from that earlier video. Getting a full army of Legion Imperialis on the table is going to take time and money, and it's important we're aware of that. But at the same time, we want to be able to play the game and have some fun. And that's what this video is going to focus on. So, what should we plan on buying on Saturday when the pre-order goes live? Warhammer Plus on Wednesday revealed a battle report for Legion Imperialis, which was quite interesting. It was a relatively small board size of 3 foot by 3 foot, and had small enough armies around 1.2k points. In the previous videos, I talked about 3k armies, which should be the default, but for us just starting a smaller force is going to be a lot easier to collect and a lot more magical to play. If we look at this Solar Auxilia, we can basically see this is the contents of the core box with an extra box of men. It's not a massive army, but it still does look impressive. The Warhound is no doubt pulling a lot of weight. As I understand it, the Warhound is about 330 points. To feel this at 30%, you need at least 1.1k points. And that might be a good initial target to go for. Similarly, these are the space marines from the core box, but we'll just an extra infantry box and then a box of rhinos to round it out. Honestly, these look like pretty nice armies to start into. Now, I would be tempted to build out from there with some additional tanks. I could definitely see the appeal of a double box where you'd end up with more Sicarians and more Predators. So that first step is obviously going to be a core box. We get what we believe to be a full box of Astartes troops, a full box of solar infantry, four half boxes of tanks, and a box of warhounds. The general evaluation is that the rulebook and the warhounds are the bonus. You're paying box price for the contents of everything else. The titans and the core rulebook and what you get for free. At this point, it is kind of important to ask yourself, what do you want? Are you looking to make a single list or a full battle with two lists? If you were to get two core boxes, then you'd have the startings of a Solar and Legion's army, each with two Warhounds for support. If you're only looking to make one army, then you do end up with a lot more allies uh, you probably can't use. I doubt anyone will be able to ship Warhound Titans after this box releases, and I also suspect that the Legion side is going to be a lot more popular than the Solar Exilia side. I do want to make a two-player version myself, but I don't want extra Warhounds, so in this case I am going to go for just one. When building armies in Legions Imperialis, we structure things into formations. You need at least one formation per 1.5k, although it's possible to have more. The Legion Demi Company and the similar Solar Auxilia sub-cohort seem to be the default starting point. These require HQ, a support, and two core. The command staff for the infantry, infantry is the HQ element, tactical squads and the Auxilia LAS rifles are in the core, and the support is things like the Augurans, Terminators, and special weapon troops. It's likely that the game will be using boots on the ground to hold objectives. So they will be forming a kind of key part of our army. We do already have enough to take all the box on formations from the infantry we get in the core box, but we're doing so at a minimum size. We can make the detachment bigger if we wanted, and I think that's what makes buying another box of infantry a good first step. Whether you get this as part of a second core or you buy the box separately, it should give you enough to make two detachments, or another two detachments, or just expand out the ones that you have. It also takes some of the infantry to enough to field in their own unit. Units like the Ogren or the Assault Marines can be added to the Laz Rifles or Tactical Units to give them a little bit more punch. Or you can assign them to their own units. For Solar Auxilia, you get four of each in the support units, but for the Legion Marines, many of them are at two, and you need another two from before they can be filled as their own unit. Here we have the Solar Auxilia subcohort, which you can see differs slightly from the Legion's one. Rather than any core, they must have last rivals in that slot. They have three transport slots, where the Legion has only one. Or the Legion does get a special rule allowing their infantry to get rhinos. 
there are also a few spaces where the options are different, but largely it's the same. In the battle report we saw on Warhammer Plus, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, we did see Ultramarines zoom quite quickly across the board. The Rhinos is probably a good box to buy. The Solar Auxilia don't have any transport listed in the Saturday wave, although we have had an article go up recently talking about the Dracosan, which looks like it's a Proto Chimera. So we can expect that in a later wave, possibly as part of the upcoming book, The Great Slaughter, which was mentioned in White Dwarf. If we look at the Lehman Rust Squadron, we can see it starts with four tanks. We do have the option to increase the size. So while we're limited on the number we have within the overall formation, we can adjust the size of the squadron. They will end up all together on the board and activating as a unit, but it will be more damage and can take more hits. We also have the option of taking additional formations. So in this case, we have an armored formation. This opens up additional options, but those require that we take compulsory attachments. In this case, it means we must have two detachments of battle tanks and one detachment of heavy armor. So far, we've seen a few different formations for each faction. And based on that, it's likely that the legions are going to have the demi company, an armored company, and one other company in the main book, possibly a legion of aerial assault, which was mentioned in one of the articles. Auxilia have the sub cohort, pioneer company, and an armored company. And then you've got the online ones like the Titan legions, which will have their own options. From the White Dwarf, we've also seen a Legion Garrison Force, a Drop Pot Assault, and a Sky Hunter Phalanx, which we're all expecting to be in later books. Looks like we'll be kind of limited at the start, but we'll have more options later. But what does all this mean for what we're going to buy? We know the standard formation has a core of infantry, so extra infantry box is probably going to be worthwhile. We also know that there's a number of limitations on how we build out the company. As we can take multiple formations, it's not that bad, but Four different aircraft work is not going to be an option. Initially, it would seem that we're best off trying to build within those core formations, the Solar Auxiliary Subcord and the Legion Demi Company. That's probably a good basis to work from. Okay, so the main question, what to buy? For sure, if you want to get into this game, you're going to be getting the core box, which will give us the core book and the basic models. I would also make a case for the army cards, as it will make learning the game a lot easier and it's Liani reference. Now, I know 40k had a big release of unit cards, which was quickly replaced. So you'll need to decide for yourself whether you think this is likely for this game. While this is coming from a specialist studio who tend not to uh, have such quick turnarounds and invalidate stuff like that, this game is also pitched as a big battle type format. Personally, I think I will be getting one of each, as it is nice to have the option uh, for the allies as well. I'll also say that GW tend to do cards in small and limited runs, so in this case, they're only doing these on their store. So you're not going to be able to get them, um, or I don't believe you can get them in your local store. I hate saying this, but I think this might be a FOMO purchase. I, I suspect when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, and it might take a while for them to get reprinted if they ever do. Now, there is another option. So what we can do is we can buy the box, or buy the book, buy an infantry box and a tank box, which will give you the same of the actual faction. So if you're only interested in the Legion, then you know this is the exact same as you're getting in the box. For less than the cost of one more box though, you would get two Warhounds, all of the other factions stuff, the whippy stick, the dice, the tokens. Even And even if you're sticking with the Legion, you still can use the Auxilia as an allied force. So in this case, while this is certainly an option, I honestly do think that the core box is going to be worth it. So this particular approach is not recommended. The other question was around whether you should get a second box. If you are interested in putting together two distinct armies, so one for the Legion and one for the Solar, then two boxes I think are probably a good option. However, you are going to end up with a lot of the Warhounds. I do not think it's a good idea if you're only interested in Legion or you're only interested in Exilia. And yeah, mostly that is around the Warhounds. I think having a second book is probably handy uh, if you've got someone else to play with. If you're interested in putting together both these armies, this is probably a good purchase, but otherwise I'd stay clear of it. And in my case, I might consider putting together both these, but I actually do have a lot of Titans already. Two Warhounds will find a place in my Titanicus list, but I don't need more than that. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get just the one box and I'm going to leave it at that. Now, what if you're just interested in Legion? So you've got the box and you've got the cards, which is a great start, but then you want to push it a little bit further. What are the options here? 
My recommendation is to get more infantry, as we discussed, and then pick up the rhinos. I think that will be an incredibly solid start. So the other releases that are coming out are the Kratos Heavy Tank and the Thunderhawk, and then all the Titans. So I definitely avoid more Titans for the time being. We want to focus on building out the Legion options, and we already have the Warhounds. The Kratos and the Thunderhawk are no doubt awesome additions. But what we have here will form the core. We're confident that these will be in our list no matter what happens. And we are going to see more tanks and more options further down the line. I feel like these are reliable, good choices. It might turn out that we get the, the Kratos and the Thunderhawks further down the line. But I think we're, we're solid with uh, this initially. If you're going with the Solar, then again, infantry is the way to go. But I don't think you necessarily need to go look at any of your options. And that's just because of the range that is initially coming out. For Again, we have all the Titans, but for the Solar, there's a lot more aircraft. There are a lot of fantastic options because you're getting in the old models. And there are beautiful models coming in from Aeronautica. Um, but I would probably avoid those in the short term because they... Flying will probably add elements of additional rules, and you know we can kind of stay clear of that when we're learning. I'm also tempted to say that maybe if you're going at the solar, you're probably a treadhead. You probably like the idea of tons of tanks. The only tanks that are due out are as a, as a standalone release are the Bane Blades. If you want to get some extra tanks, you either get an extra core or you get a, a Bane Blades. My temptation would have been to get a different tank, but the Bane Blades are the only options. And, you know, if you like Solder, get more tanks. That makes sense. As an aside, for terrain fans, I do think that this Civitas Imperialis administrative section is a great deal. And again, we're talking about GW size deals. So in this, there's four of the normal building sets, and then there's a Spire set. The normal building sets go for £30 each, and the Spire goes for £20. And there's four of the normal sets in there. The £100 price tag means you're saving about £40. Not everyone is going to be interested in this. I quite like this scenery. I think this will probably be something I do pick up. And uh, if you're a Titanicus fan, this obviously will do double duty because it's the, the same sort of thing. So this is a great way to build out a city. You don't necessarily need it, especially if you've got someone else who's uh, willing to, to, to do that for you. So I marked this with a FOMO, as it were, because the last time this went up, I don't think it sold out straight away, but after it was gone, it was gone. So this box here is for Titanicus. It'll obviously be rebranded. But yeah, the, the box, after it disappeared, didn't come back. And we, you had to get them individually after that. The other thing to mention is the tiles. The experience that we've had with GW and tiles like this, particularly with Necromunda, is that they tend to be quite popular and they tend to sell out fast. The reason they sell out fast is because people need multiple ones of them. The estimation was that you would need five of these to do a full board. Unfortunately, I think the pricing is ridiculous. It is super expensive. So I do not recommend getting this. However, if you have infinite money and this hobby project sounds like something that you're interested in, this might be something that once it sells out, it's gone. So you've got that FOMO element in there, unfortunately. Okay. My recommendation then, overall, is to focus on building formations, and specifically the Demi Company and the sub-cohorts, which are at the core of the game, which seems to have a, you know, an importance for infantry. So we're going to be using those infantry to capture objectives and win games. So they are going to be important. So building out from that is a good idea. With the Legions, we also have the option of uh, painting up formations in different Legion colors. We know that various Legions have different abilities, and in the White Dwarf battle, we did see the Death Guard bring a Long and Emperor's Children formation and get to use their special ability as well. So in addition to tons of units to get, we'll also want to get even more so we can paint them in different colors. They do seem to be a fairly manageable chunk of hobby, though. If you're like me, you probably play a few different games and have different products to go for a while. Finishing an entire army can be a massive undertaking. But if we're just focusing on getting one formation done, then it's a much easier chunk to manage. I am really looking forward to getting my hands on this. I'll be putting in my pre-orders on Saturday, then I'll be waiting another two weeks because unfortunately it does take quite a while for a GW product to make it to us, to get it in our hands. 
But in that time, we'll probably have a bunch of videos from content creators who have got their hands on it, have had their hands on it for several months at this stage. So hopefully we'll see some amazing looking armies painted up. We will see some cool battles and people who have had a chance to read through the rules and really kind of get an idea of what's in there. FOMO is a terrible, terrible thing. But at the same time, this does look like a fantastic game. So manage your expectations well, work out what you want to buy, and then uh, enjoy your hobby. That's all for me. All right, have a great day. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week, I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.